1982, my husband Grant and I moved from California to Massachusetts with our newborn son. Being a church-going family, we looked for the nearest chapel and soon found ourselves in a congregation led by a clearly bright and capable man named Mitt Romney. I knew Mitt was special from the start. At the time, we didn't know own a dryer, and the day he stopped by to welcome us, I was embarrassed to have laundry hanging all over the house. But Mitt wasn't phased. In fact, as we spoke, without a word, he joined me and actually started helping, helpfully plucking clothes from around the house and folding them. By the time Mitt left, not only did I feel welcome, my laundry was done. As Grant and I juggled school, jobs, church, and family, we grew to love the Romneys. They became role models and friends, and we were honored when Mitt and Ann regularly trusted us to stay with their five rambunctious but very loving sons when they traveled. It was when our daughter Kate was born three and a half months early, however, that I fully came to appreciate what a great treasure of friendship we had in Mitt and Ann. Kate was so tiny and very sick. Her lungs not yet ready to breathe, her heart unstable, and after suffering a severe brain hemorrhage at three days old, she was teetering on the very edge of life. As I sat with her in intensive care, consumed with a mother's worry and fear, dear Mitt came to visit and pray with me. As our clergy, he was one of very few visitors allowed. And I will never forget how when he looked down tenderly at my daughter, his eyes filled with tears, and he reached out and gently stroked her tiny back. I could tell immediately that he didn't just see a tangle of plastic and tubes and wires. He saw our beautiful little girl, and he was clearly overcome with compassion for her. During the many months that our Kate was hospitalized, the Romneys often cared for our two-year-old son, Peter. They treated him like one of their own, like a sick son. They gave him a nickname and even welcomed him to stay the night when needed. When Thanksgiving rolled around, Kate was still struggling for life. Brain surgery was scheduled, and the holiday was the furthest thing from our minds. But that morning, I opened my door to find Mitt and his boys, arms loaded down with a Thanksgiving feast. Of course, we were overcome. When I called to thank Anne later, she sweetly confessed it had been Mitt's idea that most of the shopping and cooking and chopping had been done by him. She and the boys had just happily pitched in. Eventually, we moved from Boston. Our daughter, Kate, grew into an amazing girl of faith and love. But complications of her birth remained with her. And after 26 years of both miracles and struggle, she passed away just a year and a half ago. In the midst of making the final decision to run for president, which had to be the most difficult of their lives. When they heard of Kate's passing, both Mitt and Ann paused to personally reach out to us and extend us sympathy and express their love. It seems to me, when it comes to loving our neighbor, we can talk about it or we can live it. The Romleys live it every single day. When the world looks at Mitt Romney, they may see him as the founder of a successful business, the leader of the Olympic Games, or a governor. But when I see Mitt Romney, I know him to be a loving father, a man of faith, and a caring and compassionate friend. It is with great excitement and renewed hope that I think of how our country will be blessed as it is led by a man who is not only so very accomplished and capable, but who has devoted his entire life quietly serving others. That man is Mitt Romney.